thanks for making the time to be here. Um, I wanted to introduce uh, myself and open up the session. My name is Paula Ardillis, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Faculty of Health Science at Simon Fraser University. Um, my work focuses on community engaged education, social innovation research, and knowledge mobilization. And I am very pleased to be here um, on the unceded uh, territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically where I live and work um, is the lands of the Musqueam, the Squamish, the Salatooth, the Kwantlen, the Coquitlam, and other First Nations people. Um, I am originally from uh, the south of the globe, from Chile. Uh, I uh, came to Canada as um, a refugee child in the 1970s from the dictatorship in Chile. And so the work here at Participedia is uh, very uh, significant for me as well um, as it relates to my commitment also to um, decolonization and to human rights. A little bit information about Participedia in case you are not familiar. We are a global network, a global community, um, and actually a crowdsourcing platform sharing knowledge about democratic innovations. And we are actually in the phase two of the project that is led uh, by Professor uh, Bonnie Ibarau, a director of the Center for Human Rights and Restorative Justice at McMaster University. Welcome, Bonnie. Um, he's also the chair of the UN Expert Mechanism on the Right to Development. Um, I am one of the co-chairs of Participedia's uh, teaching, training, and mentorship group, and we have decided this year that we're organizing some teaching um, cafe events like today because we think it's really important for our community and the broader community to share um, what um, people are doing that are part of the network so that we can all learn from each other, particularly as it stands to the work that we're doing both on the teaching and the research side. And one of the things that we have explored over the last while is the focus on, on students, that we really wanted to raise students' voices and their participation because they have a lot to teach us. And we also can learn from the wonderful experiences that are happening in the classroom with uh, professors and students and courses that are already involved in the network. So that is what we're gonna be sharing today. We're really excited to have a wonderful team um, from McMaster that is going to be doing uh, a talk about the, their experiences in the classroom. And I'm gonna be handing over in a few minutes um, the platform to Karen. Um, so uh, Professor Karen Black Blackholm is a collaborator and she's a cluster mentor with, um, sorry, a cluster member with Participedia. She's an associate prof in the, in the Department of History at McMaster University, um, in addition to teaching courses in gender and social studies and integrated business humanities. She is also the academic director for community engaged teaching and learning with the Office of Community Engagement at McMaster. So we're really looking forward to hearing more about your work, Karen. Um, Dr. Balcom has developed the senior capstone course that we will be discussing today um, for uh, the next little while. So how we're setting this up is that Karen is going to be introducing the course and we're actually going to be watching a video that was developed as part of this and that is going to be for about five or ten minutes and then afterwards we are actually going to have a conversation with two of the students that participated in the course so that we could hear from their perspectives in terms of the rich uh, learnings and also teachings for us so that we can also implement this in our work after the 30 minute panel with the students, uh, we will have a chance to open up the discussion so that all of you can also participate. So uh, I am going to pass it over to Dr. Balcom. Hi everyone, I'm really happy to be here to speak with you about this amazing teaching experience I have. And before anything else, I want to also draw your attention to Dr. Emily Scherzinger, who's also on this call. Maybe Emily can wave. Um, this course was co-developed with Emily, and she was the teaching lead who supervised the work that you're going to hear about today. I'm going to do that Zoom teaching thing and share my screen.
Okay, I'm going to be as quick as I possibly can to try to set the stage because it's far more interesting for you to talk to Rachel and possibly Emily about what happened in the course than it is for you to talk to me. So we're going to talk about my experience or all of our experience doing community engaged teaching with Participedia. I think all who are on the call uh, and probably most who may watch it later are familiar with Participedia as a, a global network and crowdsourcing platform. What we did in this course is we worked with a very small team of students from McMaster's Integrated Business and Humanities program, and we worked with a community partner. In this case, the community partner of which you will hear more is 10C, Space for Change or Shared Space, 10C. And the students worked to develop to document social finance and public participation innovations at 10C. So a tiny bit about the course. This was a senior capstone course in this integrated business and humanities program focused on community engaged research. The program itself is quite unique. It blends a traditional business education with a deep engagement with humanities. So we have business training and the critical thinking and communication skills of the humanities. The program has pillars in leadership, community engagement and social entrepreneurship. So the course the students were in was that final capstone, that pulling together of work they'd done previously in community engagement and extending it, I think, far further than they had before. It was project-based learning, where they worked with community organizations. You're seeing one example from eight projects that went forward in the class. The idea was to model active citizenship and show the students a path to ongoing community engagement and democratic participation after they graduate. It was meant to be, uh, coming out of my role in the Office of Community Engagement, an attempt to walk my talk about best principles of community engaged teaching. And it was meant to be a proof of concept for developing relationships and working in collaboration with community organizations to map and record public participation and democratic innovation. So the idea is that we are going to do this next year and the year after and the year after and try to build a robust set of profiles about organizations and cases working in the, in, in the city where we work, Hamilton, although this first case actually comes from uh, the city where I live, Guelph, Ontario. So at the core of this is a set of principles of community engagement. These were developed specifically at McMaster in collaboration with our community partners. But I think if you have a community engaged institute at your university or you're familiar with community engaged research or teaching, the kinds of principles that are captured here, uh, they will be very familiar. Uh, about how you want to structure relationships, reciprocal, sustained, mutually beneficial relationships with community partners, which take account of equity, which involve an openness to learning on both sides, which are continuous and which involve a commitment to act. So right from the beginning, uh, we, we had, the students had learned about these principles in an earlier course, but the first thing we did in the course was to bring that back into full knowledge. And certainly as Emily and I were developing the course, thinking about these principles, working them through as we developed our relationship <laughs> with partners, that was job number one. So our community partner is an organization called 10C Shared Space. Their tagline is creating space for change. It's a hub of community change makers in Guelph, Ontario. It's a space, both literal and metaphorical, that motivates a number of innovations that fit very easily and quite fully within the Participedia interest in public participation and democratic innovation. And now as a result of this project, if you wanted to learn more about 10C, you could actually look at the Participedia entries that the students created one on 10, uh, 10C as an organization, and then two on specific innovations in social finance, one around community bonds and one around harvest impact. Now, after I stop speaking, which will be very soon, uh, we're gonna see a video just under two minutes long that introduces you to 10C. We had hoped that Julia uh, Grady, the executive director of 10C could be with us today, but unfortunately that, that didn't work out. So some of the things that, that we're going to talk about today are specific. 
a relationship with a community partner, relationship being really important. Uh, and we chose to begin this process with 10C, largely because I had a pre-existing relationship with 10C, I'm a member at 10C. So the relationship piece was in place already. The other parts of this were students with skills and preparation. Our students brought a particular skill set, but every group of students brings a skill set you can activate. A commitment to principles of community engagement and also interacting with the Participedia platform. And our result was that bringing these four things together was incredibly fruitful. And you're gonna hear about that now. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. I think Jesse's about to show you this short video. I'll pop my, my slides into the chat and they have a link to my office if you ever want to follow up more about how we do community engagement and how we support community engaged teaching and learning. So I will turn over to Jesse. We're not gonna make this space inclusive. We're going to design it with you in mind. The core premise of sharing and shared space is, is this isn't my space. It's not even 10 C space. No, this is your space. design physically, but design socially, like, like, you know, careful curation. Almost 200 members were touching on all of the sustainable development goals, right? Which is pretty cool. It provides hope and inspiration for small emerging initiatives. I don't know, like, I kind of just want to say really practical. Useful, and I know that's not the most interesting word, but it matters, it really works. You're always understanding that there's creative stuff being done on an ongoing basis. And that can't help but help motivate you, inspire you, maybe even inspire a bit of competition in you. The fact that you bump into so many different people with different skill sets and backgrounds is part of what makes the space kind of pop and, and be unique. And now let's turn it over to the heart of the matter, which is the students and their experience. Thank you so much, Karen. So um, I am going to be facilitating a conversation um, with uh, Rachel West, who is our star today. Uh, unfortunately, we had uh, a couple of other students that aren't able to make it, but if they do come in, um, we will definitely uh, incorporate them into the conversation. And I also invite Emily, if there's a, at any point that you want to jump in the conversation, please uh, feel free to do so. Um, so the questions that uh, we have prepared are, have also been designed with the students. So that's, I think, an important part of this, of this approach um, in terms of having their voices heard, but also making sure that uh, they tell us a little bit about their story and um, their perspectives on their experience. So the first question that I would have to Rachel is actually tell us about yourself. I'd love to hear about you, um, what inspired you to take this course and um, you know what was the things that uh, got you first interested and piqued your piqued your interest so to speak yeah well I'm excited to chat with you guys today um, for me I joined the integrated business and humanities program over four years ago now I just graduate or I guess I'm just graduating now after five years so um, this project or this course was a mandatory course as part of the program, but really what it was is it, it kind of mirrored a first year course that we had already taken with Dr. Balcom, where we learned about those principles of community engagement, we learned what community engagement was, what it looked like, we kind of um, went through this whole process of building those fundamentals. And then four years later, we were all very excited to have Dr. Balcom again, and then kind of take those learnings and those principles that we learned in first year and apply it in a very practical, hands-on and real world sense in our fifth year and final year and final semester um, of the program. And so to me, that was what was exciting was to finally have the chance to kind of utilize this knowledge that I learned in my degree even before the degree was over. 
That sounds wonderful. Also, the fact that you were able to reconnect um, with your professor. I think that's also part of the whole um, beauty of this program in terms of actually build, building the relationships that you've already had um, previously. So that's, that's wonderful to hear. I, I was wondering uh, if you could please tell us a little bit about um, what approach did you take in this project, particularly uh, in the assignments when you were thinking about the overall expectations and outputs um, of this course? Yeah, so taking it back to the first week of the course, um, Dr. Balcom pitched a number of projects that we would have the option to work on. And what we were able to do was actually present ourselves and almost pitch ourselves to um, Emily and Karen and say, hey, here are the projects I'm really interested in. Um, and here's why I think I would be a good fit or here's why I think I could bring value to that project. Um, and here's what I hope to learn from that project as well. And so I rec requested to work on the 10C projects that were available um, because I had a passion for what the organization was doing. I loved to write. I loved hearing about Participedia and this new platform that I hadn't heard of. Um, and so that was definitely something um, that led me to be interested in the project. And then once we were assigned into the project groups, it was me and two other students. So we were a group of three. It was actually the smallest group um, in the class out of all the projects, but I actually think it worked really well, the fact that it was just the three of us. Um, and we also had pre-existing relationships. So we trusted each other, we knew each other, we knew how to work well together. Um, and so we based our approach on that relationship. And so we were able to just kind of hit the ground running. And the first thing that we were tasked with was building a research plan um, with the help of Emily. And so um, we were able to develop uh, key outputs. We were able to develop a timeline, um, how often we would be meeting, rules for communication. And then another thing that was super key was we were actually able to outline our grade weight for each component of the project. So we could define the importance of each of the components. And so throughout the semester, there are probably four or five components of this overall 10C Participedia project. Um, and so we got to decide how important each part was and then work with um, Emily in order to kind of make that all come together. But then at the same time, bring 10C along through every decision, every kind of communication and every point of like moving forward because for us it was really important to make sure that we weren't doing what we wanted but we were doing that was going to what was going to be most beneficial for 10c as an organization so it sounds like you've already answered the following question that i had which is around how you were implementing or maintaining those principles of community engagement that were um showed earlier by dr Valcom. i was wondering if there was any other um thoughts that you had around that uh, that you wanted to share with us, I, I would say particularly as it relates to the trust building piece that I think you you mentioned there at the end. Was there anything else that you wanted to share maybe about the other principles? Yeah, so um, we definitely kept those six principles in mind. In fact, I think we wrote about them in our research plan um, and how we wanted to implement them. The two that were really important to us were relationships and openness to learning. We knew that Dr. Balcom had already built a relationship with 10C and that's the foundation with which we approached the project, but we wanted to be able to build our own relationship with 10C and make sure that it was a relationship built on that trust and mutual respect for one another. And then the other principle of community engagement that really highlighted our work was openness to learning. None of us had ever heard of Participedia before. Um, and so we had to be really open to learning about the platform and what it could offer. And I think 10C also had to be open to learning about Participedia. They had never heard of it either. And so it was almost like Emily would come in and she would pitch Participedia as a platform and say, hey, here's, here's what's going to be great about it. Here's what's going to be amazing. Um, here's what it could offer you. Here's the value of the platform. And then from there, we were all able to get excited about Participedia and then move forward forward with the project. But in terms of that trust piece, I think, like I mentioned, as a student group, we had already worked together, we knew each other well, and so we had that trust first and foremost. And then the other thing was that trust that Dr. Balcom had built with 10C, and we took that really seriously. Like we felt that it was our job to kind of take this baton from Karen and carry it on. And I think something else that comes from being in the integrated business and humanities program, we're the first cohort of it, is that um, we're still establishing like a reputation and relationships with that program. And so as future alumni, as current students, we wanted to make sure that we were establishing 
really like a good name for the program and that we were going to approach every decision with like integrity, with understanding, with honesty, and really develop that relationship with 10C. Um, and so I think that that focus on relationships really enabled trust building. I would say at the beginning stages of the project, we definitely had to have more touch points with 10C, more um, communication, more asking questions, asking almost for permission. And then as that relationship grew and built, by the time the third article was coming around, they had a lot of trust in us. And so it was more like, here's the draft that we've written, want to take a look and then kind of go from there. Whereas the first article, there was a lot of back and forth. And so I think that that progression and that growth from article one to even article three shows that that trust was built with the organization. And I'd hope they'd say the same. Thank you, Rachel. That was that was a very comprehensive answer. Um, I'm also looking in the chat and seeing Karen's comment about the planning. Um, so <clears throat> I think that that's another other really important piece to acknowledge is that all of that um, it, that enabled that flow and the ease of communication and the trust building was also built um, in advance because of previous relationships that they had had, but also the the, the actual labor that it takes in order to set up those uh, trusting partnerships. So um, thank you for for sharing that. Um, um, you obviously had a lot of support from your uh, instructors and uh, the researchers that were working in supporting you in this relationship and building out the, the project, but I was curious if you had any significant challenges that you wanted to share, something that you had to overcome along the way. Yeah, I would say there were a few smaller challenges, none that felt insurmountable or like too overwhelming, but a couple of those smaller challenges, one being our lack of knowledge of Participedia. I think for the first two weeks of the course, I would spend like every other day just on Participedia reading articles, whether it be case or organization, just to get an understanding of like how people were already using the platform and like best practices. And so I found a few articles on there that I thought were like, standard like like star I would give them an A plus and so those were the ones that we shared with 10C and were able to communicate to them the value of the platform through those examples and so I would say that was a challenge we overcame another one was being completely virtual which I think is a standard answer to the what were your challenges over the past two years um, but being completely virtual meant that we didn't actually talk to um, Julia or Jess as well at 10C face to face throughout the entirety of the project we didn't have the chance to go and visit, um, but I would say that using Zoom, having those cameras on, having those meetings, not just doing everything over email was a way that we kind of overcame that challenge and attempted to build relationship even in a virtual world. And then the third one I would say was probably the hardest and that's overcoming kind of conflicting priorities and responsibilities with other courses and with everything going on in our lives personally. It was our final semester before graduation um, and they say the senioritis hits in or whatever, but I would say that the fact that this project had such like a real world application and it had stakes meant that my attention and energy automatically kind of gravitated towards this project over other projects. Um, so we kind of had to overcome a little bit of those competing priorities, but this one tended to win out over those other priorities. Yeah, and I hear that a lot of had had to do with the, the engagement piece, right? That, that it seems like that uh, really supported and enabled you to want to participate, want to do your best, want to find the best cases to work from. Um, so I, I was wondering if, you know, if there's other things that you think based on your experience that we could be doing better as educators to support students in this type of work. And I think, you know, more generally, there's many uh, educators on the call today and that will be wanting to hear about how there's lots of moving parts with these um, types of uh, initiatives. So I was just curious if, if you had some advice for us as educators? Yeah, I would say in terms of like advice, I definitely think that there was value to the fact that we had worked with Dr. Balcom in our first year and then came back four years later and had this project. I would have loved if in our first year we could have learned more about Participedia. I, I don't know how much it was active or up and running in 2017 or 2018. I forget what year it ended up being. But I would say 
my advice would be to introduce platforms like Participedia to your lower level students, students in first and second year, and maybe it's not introducing to them so that they write an article. Maybe it's so that they read a couple of articles and then write a reflection on an issue that had been written about. But I think that there's a lot of value to the platform. And I think lack of awareness of the platform might lead to apprehension about the project or apprehension about like, what is this Participedia thing? What's its value to me? Um, and then the other thing that I think Dr. Balcom did very well was ensure that students were passionate about the project. And I would say that that's just advice for professors in general, whether it be any course, utilizing any platform, is if you can instill that passion or take a pre-existing passion that a student has and implement it um, or and incorporate it into a project related to Participedia, I think that would be amazing. Like as I finished this project, I kept thinking like, I wish I could write an article on like this organization or this organization back in like my hometown and things like that. So I would say that topics that students are passionate about is where you're going to get the highest quality work and the most engagement and interest from students. Wonderful. Well, you've, you've given us some great ideas. I think I'll take them back to my own university, <laughs> making sure that we're incorporating these in the uh, first or second year courses. So I'm in the same situation now with uh, my fourth year students and uh, introducing them for the first time. So I, I really uh, I am going to take that advice forward. Um, I also wanted to just check in with you, Rachel, in terms of your um, your experience in terms of what is the value behind building these community relationships as an undergrad student now that you're um, finished and ready to go off into the world. Um, I just wanted to check in in terms of like how do you compare that with the more traditional academic assignments that you've completed along your trajectory. Yeah, I would say it's my perspective of it has definitely been an evolution. From first year where I was like, why we our course we had to bus into downtown Hamilton, like take the city bus, not like a student bus um, every week. And I was like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? Why are all these people coming in and talking to us? And I would say there's definitely apprehension at first of like, is this valuable to my degree? But then as I kind of went on, it was actually some of my favorite work that we did in our program. And I think the reason that I loved the value and valued community building so much was because those assignments, those projects, those guest speakers, whatever, it had a purpose beyond just being graded. And I would say that traditional academic assignments can sometimes be like a bit of a life sucker when you work so hard on something and you write this like 40 page paper and you submit it online and then your prof is the only one who reads it and then they give you three sentences of feedback and like a number grade and maybe the number grade isn't what you wanted and then no one ever looks at it again and you're like well I'm really glad I spent 50 hours of my life on that so I would say building those community relationships is really important because it's felt really fulfilling to know that like we supported this community organization with something that we knew they wouldn't have the capacity to do themselves. So 10C was very transparent, like this wouldn't have been a priority for them in terms of their resources, because so many of these not for profit organizations have so few resources. And so um, though we had a few projects like this throughout our undergrad, and while they were sometimes the most challenging or difficult to like navigate, they often um, felt really great. And then the other thing I would say is there's networking opportunities that are available. Tensi joked with us at the end. They said, you're already halfway onboarded. Let us know if you guys want a job, which was a joke, like half, we already had jobs and stuff. So we weren't actually actively seeking, but I would say even just networking opportunities within communities that you're a part of, whether it be something you want to like volunteer in later or become a member. Um, it, I think those uh, relationship building is important for that. Thank you. And speaking of relationships, I'm curious to know if you if you feel that your relationships with 10C, Participedia, or other community organizations that you're involved in have changed throughout the process. Yeah. Well, like I mentioned, I didn't know Participedia was a thing before this project. Um, and so I'd say that's the biggest relationship change that's developed. Um, I wish I knew about it sooner so that I could go on, see what more things were, more articles were about for other undergraduate projects, things like that. But um, in terms of the relationship with Participedia, it's been great to get to know you guys over the past few weeks, even planning this. And I hope to stay like in touch with the Participedia community. I think it's really important what you guys are doing. 
Um, I would say with Tennessee as well, I really want to plan a road trip and kind of drive out to Guelph this summer and go and see the space and um, talk to Jess and Julia in person because I do feel like a friendship, a rapport was developed there. Um, and then in terms of other community organizations, I think that one is going to take a little bit of time to see how this has impacted the way I approach kind of my life as a postgraduate and what I want to do and how I want to engage with my community. I'm in the process of finding a new place to live in a new city. And so I'm curious to see where this experience takes me and what organizations that I find myself connecting with and how this kind of inspires what, what organizations I um, engage with in the future. Maybe I'll write a Participedia article on them. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm sure that there'll be lots of opportunities. Uh, I think that once you're engaged, you're going to be hooked. So um, I wanted to ask you something. Um, did this course and this participation with um, Participedia, did it uh, shift the way um, that you now see your future role in community engagement? Yeah. I've always felt like community engagement was a core value of mine. I was definitely raised that way. Both my parents are hugely involved members of their local communities um, and brought me out for a billion and one events and volunteering and things like that. I would say that I didn't really, I hadn't made the connection between my skills as an academic or as a writer or even as a future marketer, which is what I plan to go into and how I could engage with community organizations from that lens. Um, and so I would say that this course and this project has kind of broadened my idea of what community engagement might mean. Um, and maybe it's not volunteering, maybe it's not um, like going to a speaker series or whatever, or going to an organization, maybe it's offering my skills and what are those skills? And I think it's allowed me to kind of reassess what I can bring to the table. And also it's given me a lot of respect for those community organizations like Tensi who are hugely involved in their community. Um, Jess and Julia, who we worked with, I have the utmost respect for them. And I think they are just crushing it with what they're doing and their experience and their expertise really just kind of schooled me in what I thought I knew about community engagement. Um, they are such experts. And so being able to learn from them really broadened my view of community engagement as well. Excellent. And the last question that I have for you before we turn over to the chat and the audience is that how did this experience change you, Rachel, like yourself? Did you have any particular insights um, that you may be not even thought about before joining this course? Yeah, I would say I tend to be a person who plays it a little safe and I like the familiar. And with this project, I challenged myself to pick something that I really had a, not a ton of understanding about. And so I, I didn't know what Participedia was. I In first year, we did something with Tensi. A bunch of our students went and like toured the property, I actually ended up missing that day. And so I felt like I had missed out. And so I was very unaware of Tensi and what they did. And so for me, a personal learning was sometimes taking that step into the unknown or selecting the thing with the most question marks can be the most rewarding. And when I talked to my peers who did other projects, there was definitely lots of value there. But honestly, if I'm like comparing, I felt like this project had some of the most value for students in our course. And I think that being able to take a leap of faith and jump into something and say, I have no idea what these articles are going to look like. I have no idea if what even I wasn't super familiar with social finance. And that was the topic a majority of our articles were about. And so for this personally, it was being okay with the unfamiliar and seeing the value in the unknown for sure. And what an excellent uh, skill set and mindset to take forward um, as you now go into the real world. Congratulations, Rachel. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, share all of those insights and learnings with us. And also Karen and Emily, just uh, bravo, kudos for setting up such a wonderful experience. I know how much work it is. 
um, be both behind the scenes and in front of the scene. Um, so we really very much appreciate you taking the time. I have seen that there are some questions um, that are posed for Karen and Emily. And so we will also get to those um, as we uh, walk now into the second part of the of the uh, call today, which will be focusing on the discussion from the participants. And one of the things that I just wanted to um, ask before is if Emily and Karen had any comments back to Rachel or anything that you would like to say before we start in uh, the discussion. I'd like to offer some space to Emily because while I did the intro, right, um, Emily and I really worked out this course together and Emily was the one who worked the most close with the, closely with these students. Um, <laughs> hi everybody, I'm Dr. Emily Scherzinger. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like one of the best parts of working with Participedia and this group in particular was that they were so open to um, the contagion that is my enthusiasm about Participedia. And so they were, I got very excited explaining to them how they could break down 10C and, and to all of these, because Participedia is a rather organized platform. And so to be able to break the entries down into organizations, cases, methods, tools, etc. Um, I just I thought that was really cool and brainstorming with 10C and Rachel's group on what parts to pull out that are really important and of note and that can teach people things um, about social finance throughout the world um, and innovative ways that 10C is engaging with social finance. I think it was really, I got really excited about it. They were really excited about it. And so everybody was really, it, it was just a very positive experience overall for sure. But Rachel has said pretty much everything I wanted to say, so thanks. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Emily. We really appreciate that uh, coming from you, especially all, all the work that you did. And um, I really look forward to seeing what comes next. Um, I do want to turn to some of the questions that came up in the chat function. And then um, we can also raise our hands and actually speak into the camera too. But I know that there were some questions that uh, were raised, so I just wanted to get to, get to those. Um, I'm going to go to the first question um, by Jonathan Rose. And uh, what was the biggest surprise for you uh, once you got in the participating data, Rachel? Hmm. My biggest surprise, I would say in terms of by data, do you mean like all what's existing on the platform? Yeah, I would say my biggest surprise is the variety of content that is on the platform. When Dr. Balcom first shared what the platform was and said like, democratic and like justice and all that stuff I was like very unfamiliar I found myself googling a couple of terms being like what is this what is that going to entail and then as I went through the articles I was like oh I'm familiar with that topic oh I've heard of that but haven't really like dug deep into it and so I would say the variety of content that's on the platform I thought it was going to be very narrow and very niche um, but then a, a lot of it ended up just being very different from one another, which I love. And then I started to see, okay, I see how 10C could have a place on this platform. Because initially when I heard the definition, I was like, oh, that's a bit narrow. And then I saw how the connection points could happen as I looked more into it. Jonathan, do you have anything to follow up with that? No, okay. Um, well, actually just, I mean, uh, that's a, a great answer. And I was really struck by, how enthusiastic you were about the project. And the last line you said in your presentation really resonated with me about how you came in with uh, being able to, uh, eager to learn and wanting to learn, but not knowing what you'd find. And to me, that's kind of the essence of academic inquiry. So uh, that's awesome. But um, thanks for that answer. And the, the, the variety of, um, of, of sources on in Participedia is, is one of the great assets of it. And I wondered if you came into it knowing it was uh, that diverse and clearly uh, you didn't. So that's useful to know. Thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, the next question is from Jessica Jung and uh, her question is for Karen. Curious if you do any scaffolding for the group work element and helping the students to work well together, addressing any challenges if you can. I, 
but I'm going to quickly turn that back over to Rachel, uh, which is that I was lucky enough to inherit a group of students. It's a very tight knit. This is what's particular about this group of students. They have a very, a very structured program. So of across their four years, they probably took this group of 50 took or 45 took about 60% of their courses together. Just I'd say 80. 80. 80% like 80 of our courses they yeah. know each other extremely well and they've been doing group work together for a lot of years um, which doesn't mean that there weren't some bumps not that yeah. I knew of this group but in some of the other groups still even with people who are very skilled about it so maybe I will turn it over either to uh, so the first answer is in a different class yes I would have to think about that with this class um, I, I rather took it as a given and but you point me to something that I should I should think about more. Yeah, we took the same courses for the first two and a half years of our degree and then only took a handful of electives in our third and fourth year with which we could take ones outside of um, those 50 people. Um, something that Dr. Buckham did that I, I don't know if it got utilized but I know a lot of students uh, expressed how much they liked it as an option. Because at the beginning of the course, Dr. Balcom said, we're doing things outside of the course and we're working with community partners. And if you have senioritis and you're burnt out, you, these weren't the exact words that she used, um, but you aren't able to work in a group setting and show up and give 100%, or if that's not what you desire, there's an option to work on a solo project where you write a participia article on a topic. I forget exactly how it was posed, um, but there was an option for students to do something individually if they felt they weren't able to contribute fully to a group. Um, and I know a lot of students expressed that that was something that no other prof had done before, but would help a lot for students that might have like mentally checked out or wanting to do something on their own for a variety of reasons. Um, and then the other thing in terms of scaffolding, I found that the smaller group was a great advantage. In other projects, I'd been in groups of like five, six, seven people. I would say this three person group was probably the best group work experience I had in my undergraduate degree. Um, and so I would say small students who are passionate about a project, regardless of personal differences, um, there's going to be a lot of accountability in a three person group. So I would suggest maybe smaller groups. I would also say that last summer when Karen and I were building the course, we kind of already had it as a given. We were we knew that there would be some sort of individual option um, because accountability is important. and. There are life circumstances that take place. Um, you never know what's going on in someone's life. And so as a result, maybe people need this option, especially during a pandemic. And so um, I will say also that one thing that Karen taught me was um, ensuring that the group was building their percentage breakdown together. And so part of that involved um, some sort of group evaluation, self-evaluation. Um, there were check-in points, which I really appreciated. And I'm taking that into my own pedagogy from now on. So um, there is a bit of scaffolding that is built into the course, um, just in terms of the periodic check-ins with the teaching lead, but also with the group. Um, and then um, the actual accountability to each other's grades um, really worked. Um, we barely had any issues. So yeah, it was, it worked pretty well. Uh, sorry, Karen, I saw your hand go up, but I want to jump in. Another reason why we offered the individual project and the individual project would have been working with Participedia, but it would have been less community engaged. We were thinking about things like having students write uh, syntheses. Or, or collected reflections on a number of existing uh, items that are, you know, existing cases that are already there. And the reason why, so there was a reason why we wanted to have an individual option. And we wanted to have an option as well that did not involve the same relationship building with community partners um, because there are problems if you force students in a required class to engage in that kind of community relationship building and they're just not into it for whatever reason. So I wanted people to have a chance to opt out. Now, if this had been one of the courses that I teach under our specific community engagement course code where everybody coming in knows this is the work they're gonna be doing, that would be, that would be a different kind of situation. 
but um, I had it. So I wanted it to be there as an option, both for the idea that you could go individual if you just had had enough of group projects, but also that you could opt out of the community relationship building if you were just not into it. But nobody chose that. That's very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have any other questions or comments from the folks on the line? We do have some other questions that came up in the chat that we can go to, but just opening up the space. Okay. Um, I'm going to be asking a question that I'm particularly interested in in terms of the incentives for the uh, 10C in this case. Um, I am curious uh, in terms of the setting up uh, if there were um, expectations in terms of their time and resources that would be really valuable for us to know, but also in terms of them, um, I guess their perspectives on how publishing this work um, could have a positive impact for the organization. I'd love to hear some thoughts around that. Yeah, I know Karen probably has some stuff too. And then I have some anecdotes from conversations with Julia. So do you wanna go first, Karen? So the first part about that, um, this setting up of expectations of what kind of time and resources are gonna be needed from your community partner, that is step one, right? And the pre-planning is to figure out is there an outcome here or a potential outcome here that is going to be of, of benefit to the community organization? Because always working with our students, even really well-motivated and passionate students like Rachel and her colleagues, that's an investment of time. And it's an investment in time on the part of a small grassroots organization that doesn't have a lot of extra resources. And Julia has done this a number of times before. So one of the things I appreciated, and I already knew Julia separately and we'd worked together before, was that she was really, really clear about, I have the capacity to do X and I do not have the capacity to do Y. And it was Julia's request that this team be small because she felt like that would help her as we kind of put our, put our toe into this. Another group of students in this class were working with TenC in another capacity, helping TenC develop its online presence um, through a platform called Mighty Networks. Uh, and that was a result of what TenC needed to do in response to the pandemic. So there were some preliminary thoughts about, about linking those together. So eventually I think the work that the students did in Participedia will be linked up and connected back to the virtual community the larger virtual community that Tennessee is building and that other students in my class help them to build. But Julia is, um, they've done some really, really, really innovative things using community bonds to finance the renovation of a space, which then becomes in every way the center of community development in the city. And as they took on that work, they want to spread that message. So I think they're hopeful, but the, the entries have been up for two weeks, maybe three weeks. So that's what I will say. But Jess, you probably, I haven't had a chance to have a conversation with Julia yet. So you probably know more. Yeah, it was interesting because that was part of the beginning process of the project of like, how do you showcase the value of this in order to get the buy-in from 10C on like an individual level? Obviously, Dr. Balcom and Emily had done the work or Dr. Scherzinger had done the work um, to uh, get Tensi engaged with the course, but then how do we get them engaged with like the specifics as we go article by article? And one of the things that we found that Julia, the co-founder of Tensi, was most passionate about was the opportunity for mentorship. And so something she felt that she was lacking in the beginning processes because they were doing such innovative work in the area of social finance, they didn't have other organizations as much to look to and to get advice from. It was very slim pickings. And so her hope was that people even globally would see these articles and would be able to reach out to them um, and say like, hey, I'm looking to do something similar. And that was the lens with which we wrote the articles as well. And so making sure to vet every sentence is essentially by the idea of like, would this help someone who wants to do the same thing? And so keeping in mind what the goal of 10C was for the article was also really important in writing the article. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, just looking to see if anyone has any other uh, questions or curious about this last part, which I think is really, really critical. 
We have a quiet crowd today. <laughs> okay, somebody had brought up a really interesting question that's very practical for uh, people that might be interested in, in, in even starting uh, something like that. I'm, I'm really happy that Karen, that you shared um, your center's uh, website with the resources that people can go and, and get more information in relation to the community engagement um, courses and, and, and the resources there. But I'm curious in terms of uh, ethics. So somebody had, um, I think it was Jesse that had asked in terms of, do, did you need to um, get an institutional ethics for the course in advance, or were the students um, participating in that process? <laughs> yes, because Emily's going to, Emily should laugh at me about this. We had these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So I just, I would like to say that I filled out um, an ethics application. Yes, absolutely. Um, we did not have the students actually engaged in that process. Um, that was something that Karen and I did separately. Yeah. And, do you wanna... and, and, and it, there's more to that. There's more to that story than that. We we had early conversations with our ethics mm -hmm. folks about, uh, and we do have a capacity at McMaster to have course-based ethics, yes. um, which essentially transfers a lot of those immediate questions to the instructor. But we had a long as we were shaping up the projects, we had long discussions with um, our ethics office and they were like, you may not even need it given the yeah. kind of things that these right. were, the students were doing. Yeah. And then in the fulsomeness of things, I thought I'd submitted the ethics application. I in fact had not submitted the application and then partway through the term, we were in a bit of a, a worry about that. Um, not with respect to the 10C project, what they were doing did not require ethics approval, but some of the other projects. And so we had some back and forth about, okay, do we need to like get this, you know, it was basically done, but do we need to push our colleagues to approve this really quickly so the other students can complete their work? But it turned out that um, the other students, there are complicated definitions under Canadian law and granting agencies about what is needed, but none of the, some of the students did interviews, but none of those interviews got beyond sort of information gathering. How does your organization work? What does it do? That kind of stuff, which does not require ethics. However, <laughs> job number one is to get that more fulsome ethics approval in before next year. Um, so that we can let students do more complicated, uh, more complicated things that definitely would require ethics. So for folks who are interested in doing this, um, the question is ask your ethics organization at your institution. The answer we got back was to do something like work with a community organization to write about that community organization for Participedia did not require ethics. Um, but to have done like focus groups or interviews or anything like that in the community, if they wanted to, for example, interview members of 10C about their um, experiences with social finance as it's managed through the organization, that would have required ethics. Wonderful, thank you so much. And I know that it's very context specific and institutionally specific as well, but uh, we really appreciate that. And I see that Bonnie's hand is up. I think this will be the last comment or question before we wrap up. Yeah, thank you so much. This is also exciting. And thank you, Karen, for taking the lead on this and everyone was involved, Emily, Rachel. I just wanted to add that uh, Participedia already has uh, uh, an ethics approval uh, from McMaster uh, for ethnographic research. Uh, you'll still need moving forward uh, to have a more specific ethics protocol approval for, let's say, a class assignment. But we already have the framework. You know, we have the framework for doing this. So you have to do just basically cut and pasting. What is Participedia about? What are the issues and all of that? So if, if anyone uh, is interested in this, we have uh, the McMaster ethics approval for Participedia on the Participedia internal website, uh, which Paul can share with uh, anyone who's interested in seeking ethics approval. Great, great job, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Bonnie. That's a good incentive um, for us. Um, and also, just I saw the comment that Jesse just put on the chat. If anybody's interested in developing a course and using Participedia in any way, please do contact uh, that. There's a um, an email address, and I did that. So I'm uh, I'm uh, a person that actually reached out. Um, obviously, I'm very involved in this committee, but I also wanted to try it out with my students. So I'm teaching a community service course this uh, semester with health science students. 
And so we'll be developing something um, for their final presentation that will be hopefully shared back with uh, with the broader network. So um, it is very easy to get in touch <laughs> and uh, I, the very flexible team in terms of supporting us and in the ways in which we need to work with um, both as educators, as researchers, and as emerging scholars and practitioners in the real world. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for everyone's participation today and a particular shout out um, to the team that was supporting us behind the scenes. So Jesse, Jennifer, and Paul, and Bonnie, of course, thank you so much for your support for this. Uh, and also a, a, a big shout out for Rachel and Karen and Emily, and also Julie, which unfortunately we didn't get a chance to meet from 10C. I know there was a lot of work to get to this point today, and also showcasing the video was uh, really helpful. So I just wanted to say bravo. I know the commitment and the dedication that it takes to do this work. And of course, it's incredibly meaningful and impactful. And I hope that others have a chance to learn from your experiences today. So thank you so much.